Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. Now it's time to rejoin SAA professional artist David Hyde as he prepares to put the final finishing touches to his winter wonderland scene. Okay, um, earlier in the programme you, you saw me finish the, um, practically the background and the sky to get the tones in for the, for the snow. We need to work a little bit more on the uh, foreground snow to bring it forward. Um, but what we're going to do now is to uh, work some darks in behind these buildings to bring them out. I do that before I paint the buildings so as not to overpaint this important area here. So we've protected the uh, whites, or at least we've identified where the whites are going to be, so we must steer clear of that. And I'm going to use uh, a number 10 uh, watercolour sable brush here and mix my um, favourite dark mix up. Um, which is uh, Viridian, nice and thick, lots of gum arabic, lots of pigment, and then kill that green with burnt umber does it quite effectively. The reason is trees, particularly fir trees, are not that, you know, green, and these are silhouetted against the bright snow, so they'll be much darker and more neutral colour than, um, than the actual colour of the tree. So. We need a good strong mix there. I'm going to put a little bit more water in that. I judge the strength of this by the consistency. You get used to sort of knowing roughly what it's going to look like by how sticky or how wet it is. So uh, I'll just put a little bit more water on that. And I'm going to start with some fir trees here and just nothing too uh, special, just down either side, okay. You can leave little bits of white there because it will actually look like snow. So don't be too anxious to get rid of all the, uh, all the white. But when you come down to like that snow bank there, do you see how that suddenly pops forward, that snow bank? And now, to me, that snow bank looks a little too light because these dark tones the darker the tone behind a light tone is the lighter the tone looks in the foreground. So it's easier to judge with other tones around it. So it's important to get these darks in. Um, they'll help or will push the, um, the mountains back as well. Okay. They. Um, they're a little to the same height. I think I'll do that one a little higher. Try not to make them too uniform. We try not to create too many patterns or repeated shapes. Um, that looks okay, I think. But importantly, now we're coming down the slope towards the building, and I hold my brush a little closer for this to get that control over it. It's a bit dry, so I'm just putting a touch more water in that. That's better. So I've got control of it up to that snow-covered roof, which should now stand out really strongly. That's going to have light on it, so that is just the white paper. So a little bit more water here. These take a little longer, the darks, to paint in because the paint doesn't flow and you have to push every little mark in. I'm going to leave some white there for snow, a little hint of snow, um, and bring this down here, yeah, stand that one nicely in front of that mountain. And behind it, the blues, those soft blue tones, there's enough detail there for you to see that they are mountains, and, but the lighter tone and the blue colour will make them look more distant, just around the chimney and nice and dark around the roof. You can't leave too much white or very little white around the roof, otherwise it'll be confusing. You know, you'll get con uh, a confused look to the painting. This, to show this roof off, these darks must be solid. Okay? So that's a solid line, but that can be loose and broken. Okay, now it starts to shift emphasis um, to the uh, focal point, the area of interest, because of that big contrast. 
So I'm going to just finish a little bit with a couple of smaller trees here. Okay. Just in behind here. I'm going to keep them fir trees just to keep the same colour going. And again, just cut round that roof. I was tempting just to soften that out, but I'll leave that. And that looks a little mechanical like that, so I'm going to put an odd one just in here on its own, just give it a bit more of a, a random look rather than a cultivated look. So I'll just stick one in there, and that will, as well, just define the end of that building and allow me to take a dark around there. Now, I've got some distant fir trees here, but they don't want to be green at all. You know, these are further away. You can't, if you use the same green for the distant ones, there's no good just painting them smaller because the colour and the strength of tone being the same, they will read at exactly the same distance from you. So in order to fool the brain uh, to see it more distantly, I'm going to use some ultramarine blue, good old ultramarine blue, and it will add that nice distancing tone to my green mix. Um, but these are basically blue tones now. Um, I don't want them as dark, so I'm going to lighten them a bit. A little bit of water in. Obviously you would want to test this on a piece of paper first. but Okay, and your brain will register that change and it will interpret it as a change of distance. But it does allow you to get a dark at the base here. And again, it's important to get the light as bright as I can make it on that slope. Okay. So you could, again, you want to um, ignore the, uh, the actual subject. If your painting needs a little bit of dark to emphasize something, you know, be imaginative and come up with a good reason why there is something dark along that ridge and a few more trees along the background there. Uh, perfect. And a little bit in there. Uh, this time, because of that dark tone, I'm deliberately leaving these uh, trees white uh, because they need to stand out light against this dark. Sorry, I forgot they were fir trees. Let's get back to a fir tree look. Uh, I want this sort of dark here, right on this edge. Take that up nice and smoothly. Remember that you need to define the edge. So you need a, a controlled and accurate mark across there. That's fine. Uh, while I've got this, oh no, I'm just going to clean that because I don't need the green again, actually. But while I've got this blue, I'm just going to darken, put some ultramarine, perhaps a little bit of ultramarine and cobalt blue mixed together. Again, if you don't like pure blue snow, it is reflecting the sky after all, you can always put a small amount of magenta in it, just a touch, and it slightly grays it, but in an, inter an interesting way. Or you can put a bit of uh, alizarin crimson, but um, it'll make it less blue. And I'm going to put a little bit of darker tone in there to add a little bit more contrast around there. And I'm going to take that up that side there. Now these contrasts are now greater in my snow than the uh, contrasts in the mountains. So this now reads in front of those trees and in front of the mountain. Okay. Right, I'll just put a little bit up here. Okay, and I can use this colour I'm going to use a bigger brush. I'm going to switch back to the 12 wash brush, the um, Cosmotop, and just darken my snow to increase this foreground contrast. So um, I'm going to put a little bit down here, but I want that light contrast where the um, where the dark trees are to, to make that read nicely. So you can put a little bit in, and then I'm going to use this in my foreground now 
to create a little contrast here, uh, which is a foreground contrast, which brings that immediately, that will fool the brain into seeing that more three-dimensionally because you've got an increased stronger colour and an increased contrast. I drag a little bit of colour across there to give a bit of texture. Just soften that out. Try not to lose the white. I can just lose a little of it here though because I want to focus the, the attention around about there. So, you know, you can, you can have car tracks or ruts or anything in the path here to up the contrast. I'm just going to use uh, these sort of marks. They can be car tracks, vehicle tracks, but you could put footprints or anything you like through there. So, again, they need a good big contrast because it's foreground. Okay. And I'm just going to need to increase this bit over here. Okay. To finish this um, area. Now you don't have to paint it all evenly because these little light patches here will suggest unevenness in the ground and, um, and so on. So that's fine. Uh, finally, before we just paint the walls on the building. This, if this is snow on the roof, if you think about it, it'll have a little shadow here and here, here and here. Okay, and then you can paint the, the building itself. I'm going to keep them simple brick building, one in the sun, uh, one wall in the sun and one in the shade. For the sunny wall, I'm going to use the orange again because again, um, orange and blue, but not mixed orange and blue together is a good complementary contrast of colour and it'll make the orange look warmer and then I'm going to use some burnt umber into that to give a little bit of shadow so back to the orange and I'm going to put a little bit of orange there for that wall and there that one. Now, ideally, we want this to be a little lighter because although it's only a bit further away, it is further away, and these subtle uh, changes in tone will register. So, I'm going to use a little burnt umber with some ultramarine blue. I'm going to put a little bit of the orange in it just to. Make sure it looks the same. And then put a nice dark shadow behind there. Nice warm colours, oranges and browns, against the cool of the uh, against the cool of the snow. Just leave the windows there. I'm going to put just a dob in there for dark for the windows, uh, just ultramarine and burnt umber. Uh, I'm just going to put a window in there and one in there. I'll try not to touch the paint. Um, and that gives it uh, a reasonable feel. So that looks, uh, that looks fine. Oh, there's a little lean-to there that I forgot to put a shadow on, which is there. Okay, and a little shadow underneath there. Don't forget the shadows. Think about what you're painting. Think about the overhangs, where the shadows are likely to be. And uh, put them in, and it'll just make your picture work fine. I'm going to use this dark over here now on the uh, beech trees or silver birches. OK, so all I'm going to do here is just put a little bit of broken colour here to suggest the silver birches but as they grow from the ground and because that's against the light there that needs to be darker. I've left that little bit of light to separate the two trees. It's dark here because that's light there. 
few bits up there. And then when you get up into the sky, when you view anything against the light, um, it's, always, it's going to be in silhouette. So you needn't worry about light and shade on these branches. It looks better if you just take them up and create nice dark shapes against the sky. Get that nice contrast, foreground and sky distance. And uh, it will help the illusion of three dimensions. You could, if you had a rigger, put some fine, lots of fine detailed uh, brush, uh, brush marks on here for all the little branches. You don't have to join them up, it's just to create that sort of illusion of uh, twigs and things in the picture. Okay. And finally, I like to add, if the country looks a little empty, which um, this does in parts, is to create some fence posts, just a dark, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, nice sort of sticky mix, as it were, so you get some nice uh, darks, and you can put them where you think they're going to be effective. Uh, let's put one or two along here, and a nice big one here. And it just helps push things back into the, into the right places. You can also, with a rigger, you know, bring a few plants and things through the through the snow, up the, foreground, uh, up the foreground contrast a little bit. I'm just using a bit of that brown just to do it. It just helps bring everything forward and focuses the eye. And one final thing, I'm going to put a red, I haven't used red yet, so I'm going to use a red door on this. So I'm going to put a little red door in the sunlight so I can use red and just put a little red door there. Fine. So, uh, hopefully by balancing light and dark and creating shapes and, um, and, and making them sort of uh, obvious with nice dark tones, setting your lights against dark, darks against light, you can create a varied and interesting painting, strengthen the foreground and that just makes it strengthen your foreground contrasts and tones and it'll just make it three-dimensional as well. Great combination of light and dark tones. They're perfect for adding depth and highlighting silhouettes against the bright snow. Thanks for that, David. Okay, time for our final break, but join us in part four when mixed media artist Jan Gardner reveals one of her favourite artistic essentials. And I'll be delving deep into this splashy paint post bag to solve another of your artistic dilemmas. See you after the break. Mm -hmm.